through their shepherd. And so I just pray that we would, through all of this, build up an anticipation to get back to one another. That, Lord, that through all of this, that somehow, Lord, you're causing the church to grow. That through all of this, that, Lord, we're being matured and we're recognizing that fear will not lead my life, but faith will be the directing yes. uh, purpose of my life, and it will guide me, not my eyes, not my ears, but the very words of God will be the things that direct my path. I'm thankful for the fact that you have created me as salt, that you have created me as light, that everywhere I go, everywhere my foot treads, Lord, there you are with me, and I bring your presence everywhere I go. And so, Lord, today I just ask that we would hear you, we would feel you, and we would recognize what it is that you're doing through me, not just in the world, Lord, but what are you doing in me today that my ears and eyes would be open like never before, that revelation would come through the words that Pastor Jerry speaks today, that revelation would come, but Lord, more importantly, that I would walk it out so that it becomes wisdom in my life. I thank you for what you're doing in the little country church and for all the churches around the world as we get ready to come back together, Lord, I pray that there wouldn't be bickering and there wouldn't be fighting, but Lord, instead we would come in unison because Lord, when we're in unity, that's when you can do your best work. So Lord, I just pray that the churches unify and that we come against this virus. We come against anything that is trying to prevail itself or trying to raise itself up against the very gates of heaven and so lord i love you and i thank you and i just give you a praise this morning i give you a thanks this morning that the world is coming back that we will open again and that when we do lord we're going to be better than ever we're going to be more mature we're going to be ones that would seek after you because lord we know you're the answer you're the one we need you're the thing that we want and so lord i just grateful for the fact that you're doing a work in Crosby, Texas, in New Caney, Texas, that through this man, that people's ears are being opened to hear your gospel, your good news, Lord, your gospel. So, Lord, we, did, we just pray that the medicine of the gospel be spread through me, through him, through anybody that's listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. We welcome you to the Little Country Church. You know, it's been six weeks now, six weeks that we've been doing this. Uh, seems kind of crazy, but I think I believe it's a sixth service that we've had. Uh, I think that's right. It seems about right. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy, guys. We're glad you're watching on HolyWild.tv and other venues that you're going to be able to reach us with. A uh, couple of weeks ago, I preached on the essentials because people have been talking about essentials. What is essential? The Word of God declares that faith, hope, and love are essential, and you are essential. Every one of us are essential. There's no non-essential people in the world. Last week, we preached on stay in the house. We dealt with Rahab, stayed in the house when the, when the Israelites were marching around Jericho, and, and she being a foreign woman, she believed and trusted God, had faith in God. She stayed in the house, and when I see the scarlet or the, or the red cord outside the window, the house was survived. We know out of the book of Exodus, when we see the blood, I'll pass over you. Today, we're going to go into a little bit more familiar places for those that have been involved with the, with the Holy Wild Ministries. But before we do, they're in your home. I want you to take a moment. Josiah, you go ahead and start. We're going to do a worship song. Uh, just sing with Josiah a very simple song about surrender. We want you to surrender yourself. Invite the presence of God in your home. And then as we hear the Word of God together, we're going to believe for great things. And, I believe things are opening up. Just want to surrender to you, Lord. Oh, I'll give you my family, my life, my future. Let 
your presence fill this place surround me our confidence you know Moses told God he said I'll go anywhere you want me to go but you got to go first I want the presence of God to go before me the presence is something that's intangible you just know it you just know that you know that God is with you the scripture says we're two or three are gathered together there I am in the midst of them you know until we went through four floods in three years did scripture about floods and Jesus and storms impact our lives Matter of fact, I started reading Scripture a whole new way after dealing with the floods and dealing with the waters and the things that hit the Houston area over the last three years. And I, I can tell you that this pandemic, this stay-home mode that we've been in, has forced Scripture to open up. David in solitude in the caves. Joseph in the pit was in uh, isolation, if you would, incarcerated into a prison unjustly. I start seeing things totally different. But there was a time the presence of God was isolated for 20 years in the land of Philistine. There, Saul had allowed the Philistines to take it over. They had the Ark of the Covenant. You remember the Ark? It was a box, if you would, with the presence of God in it. It had uh, sticks that went through it that the priests carried. And all of a sudden, things begin to happen. Uh, the Scripture says that the, the Dagon, the god of the, uh, the Philistines, fell over on his face before the presence of God. They were struck with tumors, um, intimate tumors. I will say it that way. How about that? Uh, that things began to happen. Let me just say, it, they had hemorrhoids. I mean, God just struck them all, and they, they got sore they got sore in the butt, I guess you'd say. And because of that, they said, hey, we got to let go. We got to let this ark go. So David came back, and the Scripture tells us in 
in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 7, they moved the ark of God from Abinadab's house on a new cart with Uzzah and Ahiah guiding it. David and all Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God with songs, with harps, with lyres, with tambourines, with cymbals, with trumpets. Then they came to the threshing floor of Kidon. Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died before God. You know, as, I, as I'm reading this, we see a king who did not honor God with the proper handling of the ark. Uzzah struck dead for trying to catch God. Literally, if you look at it in, in another perspective, there was an arrogance about trying to catch God. Nobody's big enough to catch God. We see a leader and a Levite had, not, had knowledge of the ark without proper handling of the ark. And both men knew better, but were in a hurry with the things of God. Both men paid a price for their way, ways with God, yet the, the death of one is an opportunity for another. I use the term default. Uh, it's a term I didn't understand until you started dealing with computers, but to hit default means to go back, uh, to, to allow it. It's to forfeit the plan you got, to go back to the, to the natural plan. And I found that we are blessed by default. You know, the Scripture says that uh, because the Israelites did what they did, God grafted us in. So we've been blessed by default. Amen. Now, it's not my fault. We've been blessed by default. Can I get an amen? amen? 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11 says, The ark of the Lord remained in the house of a man named Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months, and the Lord blessed him and his entire household. So if you can imagine this scene, this parade coming up the road, David and, and, and all of this, uh, uh, the pomp and circumstance, and they, they got the cart on an ox, a ox cart, and they, they're bringing the ark in, and it stumbles, and us reaches and touches, and he dies. And at that moment, there was a mailbox that said, Obed, eat them. And David said, just put it in that house right there, and let me deal with it. Now, let me just mention something to you. The ark is what some would actually use the phrase, uh, let, let me say it like this. It was uh, big wheels and a board. That's what it was made out of, the ark. It was boards and big wheels. And I know churches and ministries that run off of boards and big wheels. You know, there, there's big shots in the church. There's big shots in ministries. There's big shots. And this week, I was blown away when I found out that a board and big wheels had literally laid off and fired a couple that I love that started a ministry for uh, children who were, uh, what's, what would be the word I'm looking for here? Uh, special needs. And it just broke my heart that, a, you know, the house of God needs to be ran by the presence of God, by men and women who love God, got a heart for that ministry, not by boards and big wheels. I'm going to hit on that a little bit later on, probably today, but it just kind of came all over me. You know, okay, if you don't have a heart for the house, you don't need to be on the board. If you don't have a heart for the ministry, you don't need to be on the board of advisors. You don't need to be on the, the elder board. You don't need to be on any board in that house. You've got to have a heart for the house and believe in God for the best and get behind the man and woman of God that's leading that house and help them move that thing forward by a heart that's after them. Now, Obed, his name literally means slave. He, he was uh, Obed Edom. Edom. The Edomites were enemies to Israel. He was a Gittite. He was a citizen of Gath. You remember Gath? That's where Goliath was from. And it is said here that it looks like three strikes and you're out. But this man was blessed. The scripture says, now King David, in verse 12, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went down and he brought up the ark of God with him from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. Obed-Edom, Uzzah's death was his blessing. It wasn't his fault. He was blessed by default. When God messes you up, what's happened over the last six weeks in America and around the world is, is the presence of God has gone back to your house. It's, you know, wherever you are is where the presence is. That's why I come into the house. The house of God means something. I'm not going to demean or put it away. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, when you leave your house with the presence, bring that, that when they, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Jerry, slow down. Oh, I've been, this thought has been running through my mind. But there inside, Obed didn't have nothing going on. He had a house full of raggedy old cats. He had, he had a messed up farmyard. He had some old saggy cow out there. Wasn't giving no more milk. 
Things were a mess. But then all of a sudden, God showed up. Amen. In this presence, his presence, when you study the presence of God, it served an important purpose in the Old Testament. In it were, uh, were stored many religious uh, relics, if you would. With it came the presence of God, Jehovah. They, they had placed it before the Philistine army had, had stole the ark, and all kind of bad things happened to them, as I already mentioned. First Chronicles chapter 13, David decides to return it to Jerusalem. He moved it with the wrong instructions. First Chronicles 13, 13, he did not take the ark to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it and put it aside to Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in the house for three months. 12 weeks, 90 days, and the Lord blessed his household and everything he did. Obed's Edom, his whole life changed. Uh, we find him as just a man whose house was available. It, God's looking for a home that's available. If he can just come and hang out at your house, amen, and be with you over the, next, uh, the rest of your life. Let me just say it that way. You can imagine what can happen. Nothing changes a life more profoundly than seeing an impossible situation develop possibilities. I'm looking at impossible situations all over the world right now, and I'm saying, God, I know you're going to develop some possibilities. The Money. Finances have never left the, the, the planet. You may say, well, I'm, I'm losing my... It's never left the planet. It might have changed pockets, but it never left the planet. I'm looking for some possible situations to take place in your life, my life, and others. A further look into Scripture, Paul reminds the Romans that if it were not for the Jews rejecting God, we wouldn't have been grafted in. Thank God God put us in. It ain't your fault. Say it with me. It ain't my fault. I was blessed by default. Amen. God just kicked it back to you. Surely those who believe they are undeserving and unworthy will understand that God has made a way for blessing to all. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed his house and everything he did. Obed-Edom's family entered the most intensive, and not only was Obed blessed, his whole family was blessed. And this is the thing that I look at. You know, Job even asked God to forgive his family for the way they acted. He sacrificed and asked God, forgive my family for the way they act. I know as men and women of God, there are times you look at your children, you look at your family and say, God, I want you to forgive my family. And God, by default, will end up blessing families because of somebody in that house that loves God like Obed-Edom. If this ark of God had the ability to de decapitate the enemy of God, imagine what it would do for a friend of God. It blessed Obed and everything around him. Now, the Scripture doesn't give us a... Doesn't fill in all the blanks on Obed's life. So allow me. The first day of Obed-Edom, he comes out after he's got the presence of God. You can see he moved out into the living room. His wife said, Obed, we ain't got no room in this house. Why you got this giant gold box in the house? What are these angels over the top touching their wings? He said, baby, I just saw a catastrophe. I saw a disaster out there on the, on the freeway. A man was struck touching it. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Just let it stay in the house. I, I don't know anything about it, but let it stay in the house. The next day, Obed-Edom comes out to mow his five-acre farm. And now he finds out he's got 500 acres. All his neighbors had moved away and left him the deed to their land. He goes to his shed to get his push mower. And instead of there, overnight, he has a huge barn. that used to belong to a neighbor. Now belongs to him. He goes into the barn for the mower. Instead, there's a John Deere tractor in there. He goes to run the tractor. And some guys show up and said, hey, we'll work for you, old Ben. And they begin to help him mow grass. Day two, old Ben Edom walks outside to milk one cow and feed one goat. He got a herd of sheep and cattle with his brand on it. How did that happen? I don't know how it happened, but God started blessing him. I I was mowing grass on the property this week. I looked up, and four beautiful calves were running over the camp of Camp Holy Wild. And I said, Lord Jesus, you're so good. <laughs> I don't know whose cows them are, but if they stay here any longer, we're going to be having steak in a few months. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't know how God's going to bless you, but he finds a way to bless you. Day three, the dog gets cured of mange, and the fleas run away. Day four, his wife invents Formula 409. Amen. Day five, his teenage son, acne clears up. Day six, his daughter gets a scholarship to the University of Jerusalem. On and on and on. He blessed, blessed, and more blessed. People who had cheated him before, they begin to pay up. Pastor are you making this up? You know I'm making this up. I have to be making it up. But the Bible says he was blessed. I don't know how. That would be a great way to get blessed as far as I'm concerned. Amen. So I'm just letting my imagination run wild here. He went from visitation to habitation. You know, a lot of times we come to church, we visit God. But what we want to do is have habitation. We want to make sure that no matter where we're at, whether we're in a business, 
or back home, that we have a habitation with God. We don't have a, I don't have to run to the church to talk to him. When I go to the church, he's there. When I come back home, he's there because I'm keeping the presence of God with me. It's not my fault. I'm blessed by default. I understand this now. As I move through Scripture, Abraham and Sarah were given a son by default, if you would. Joseph was promoted to a leadership position in Egypt. Moses led the Israelites to the promised land. Joshua won the battle of Jericho. How did all this happen? The presence, the presence, the presence. If I can keep the presence of God with me, if in my home right now, when I go back to the house, amen, the presence is going to always be with me. And where the presence is, I am blessed. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how you get your job back. I don't know how families get back together. I can tell you this, though. With the presence, all things are possible. If I can keep the presence of God in my house, if I can worship him and bring him into my home and remind myself, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Is Christ in me, the hope of glory. I have the presence of God. Amen. The Bible says that Hannah wept, and Eli said a year later, you're going to have a child. She was blessed because she, uh, women that cry and weep before God, God, I'm telling you, God will hear them. David became king because he loved the presence. Daniel was delivered from the lion's den because he loved the presence. Mary became the mother of Jesus because God saw something great in her. She loved the presence. Now we have become his dwelling place. I heard for churches that don't love the presence of God. If you're missing this thing, I don't care what denomination you are. If you're missing the presence, you're missing the blessing. Because in his presence, they're blessed. So when Obed, this Edomite, this, this Git, Gittite, amen, a man whose name looked like a slave, gets the presence of God in his house, things begin to change. See, what's the problem with many churches? They, they don't expect the best. Their idea of blessing is just getting by. They just want to just, you know, just help me suffer on through Jesus. Get me on through, Jesus. Amen. I want more than that. I want to be blessed by default. I, will, I never looked at it and said, you know what, them Jews have got it made. Never said that in my life. I realized that the same blessing on them is the same blessing on me. That the same blessing and promises to Abraham were the same promises for me. Amen. And I just accepted. Little boy from Alabama, family bootleggers. I just accepted that he was El Shaddai, not El Get By. A lot of people, they got that El Get By. You know, I'll just get by in the sweet by and by. I don't want that. I want El Shaddai. Amen. I want more than enough. Listen to me. Let me give you some facts here. First, God's presence will bless your life abundantly. He'll give you wisdom, direction, favor, protection, blessing, healing. That's what God does. How can you not live? How can you not want that? I want that more. I want wisdom and direction and favor and protection and blessing and healing. David comes back for the ark. He studied. How do I get that ark back? I got to get the presence of God back here to my house. So David comes back for the ark. Amen. And, you know, David might be a little slow. And some people, they kind of slow about getting things together. But he ain't stupid. He figured this thing out. I don't want anybody else to die. I got to have favor in my life. I wasn't the first person to live a life of blessing. But when I found it, I knew I had to have it. And I went for it. I can imagine Obed-Edom. When David said, hey, I'm, I, I got to have the ark back. Now, you can't be serious. You can't take this out of my house. You don't know what's happening. Look at my place, man. You know, my walls are falling down, and now I'm blessed. Amen. My house is all painted. We've added five new rooms onto the house. I don't know if you noticed, David, but I got 62 relatives. Amen. And every one of them are blessed right now. Amen. Everyone just assumes that Obed Edom stood there and said, Goodbye, presence of God. I'll see you later, presence of God. Let me help you out. If you've ever known God, if you've ever had the blessings of God on your life, to backslide and fall away from that is your detriment. You need to run back to the house. You need to invite him back into your house. Amen. You need to reconnect. Listen to this scripture. First Chronicles 15, 15. And the Levites carried the ark of God with the poles on their shoulders. Mm-hmm. This is a, as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their fellow Levites as musicians to make a joyful sound with musical instruments. So the Levites appointed Heman, son of Joel, from his relatives, Asaph, son of Barak, amen, from their relatives, and, and the Mirrorites, Ethan, son of, now watch this, let's go to the next scripture here. And with them in their ranks, relatives next in the rank, Zechariah, Jaziel, Shemoah, Jehu, Hannah, Eliab, Benaiah, Messiah, 
Matthai, somebody else, somebody else. Look at that name there. Obed-Edom and Jael, the gatekeepers. In other words, when the ark left, Obed-Edom got him a resume and filled it out and said, I don't care what job you give me. I want a job near the ark. Just put me near the ark. And he, was, he began to follow, and he became a gatekeeper in succession, if you would. Obed-Edom's life after the ark, if you study, again, 62 offspring that are all called blessed by God. All of them called blessed. He becomes the keeper of the gate of the temple and the treasury because of his integrity. He enters the house of praise as a singer and a musician. His house turns from poverty to prominence. He is honored instead of being despised. Amen. He brings his whole family with him and moves them into, uh, to where the ark is there in Jerusalem. You know, you might take God's presence from this place, but I'm coming with you. By the way, whenever this thing is lifted... Bring the presence back to this house. And every time you come into your church, you bring the presence of God with you. Amen. And let the house be a place of celebration, jubilation, excitement, healing, wisdom, guidance. Bring the presence in here because that's what makes the house the house. Amen. Amen. Make sure you keep the house, the presence in your house and bring it back here into this house. David, Obed, what are you doing? Hey, listen, where you live is where I'm going to live. Where the ark is is where I'm going to work. God, the mess me up. I ain't going back to any other way that I've been before. Fact number two, the presence of God will mess you up. Psalm 69, 9, David said, for zeal for your house has consumed me. I love the house. You know what the whole issue for the house for David was the presence. Being around the presence of God. Your old ways won't matter anymore. What others think of you will fade into obscurity. Old plans will no longer matter. All that will matter is walking in his presence. You can retire but God's going to force you to refire. Amen. That zeal is going to fire you up again. Obed Edom is messed up now. It's, it's, it, listen, he ends up everywhere in Scripture. He ends up in the choir. He probably can't sing a lick, but he in the choir. Amen. He's playing the harp, making a joyful no noise. He's guarding the ark at night. He can't get enough. He works up to the praise team. You know, when, whenever you love the presence of God, you, you'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I'll, I'll sing. Amen. I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll work with youth ministry. I'll clean toilets. I'll mow grass. I'll be involved in the care ministry, the hugs ministry, the, the masters, whatever the master needs, I will do it. As he continues to volunteer for everything, but may you ask him what's wrong with him? He said, I just messed up, man. I'm going to tell you, I've been messed up on, uh, on a lot of stuff in my life. But nothing ever messed me up like Jesus. I've used the term addicted to Jesus, Jesus freak, crazy about Christ. Uh, had a youth ministry called Brag Being Radical About God. There's something about falling in love with him and watching him change your life and bless you. Psalm 92 says it this way. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit, listen to this word, in old age. In other words, they ain't a time when God can't bring fruit out of your life. Amen. They shall be fat and flourishing. Now, listen, I'm not trying to be offensive. That fat and flourishing don't mean you gain weight. That literally means you're prosperous, that you have gotten prosperous, and you're going to bring forth fruit even in a, an older age. That you know if you take a green piece of fruit and put it with some ripe pieces of fruit, put it there together, it'll help ripen that fruit faster. All we need is more fruity people, and we can ripen up the rest of us. Can I get an amen? Fact number three in closing with this, the presence of God will turn you into a servant. Whenever you fall in love with him, one of the key fruits will be serving. You want to serve because you've been forgiven. To those that have been forgiven much, they love much. And when you recognize how much you have been forgiven, how much God loves you. Jesus said, whoever wants to be great must be a servant. Matthew 23, 11. Do you want to stand out? It's in the message. Then step down and be a servant. If you puff yourself up, you'll get the wind knocked out of you. But if you're content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. You want your life to count. Some of us are at the closing years of our lives. You want your life to count. One of the heartbreaks over the last six weeks I've seen is, is the people that have been so much a part of our lives that we can't go touch. I think a lot of people have died because they hadn't been touched. They haven't been connected with. They haven't had anybody hug them or hold their hand or love them. 
Amen. After Obed Edom volunteered for every job near the ark, he's asked to perform one perfect for his commitment. In 1 Chronicles 26, Obed Edom is assigned to guard the south gate of the temple. Most important because it housed treasures of the temple, the ark of the covenant. It is any wonder how well he performed. Obed Edom was too messed up to give up. In conclusion, maybe you think you're too busy to serve God's church, to invite his presence into your home. You have to just come. You got to just soak it in. I understand that, that can, you know, that can be done up to a point after a while, sitting and soaking, you're going to sour. You got to do something. You got to be involved. Right now we have the freedom to, in the state of Texas, to go out and bring groceries to, to bless others, to look after. You, you can do something to connect with them. Freely you've received, the scripture says, freely give. You know, a lot of folk have just found out just how quick their businesses can be taken away. Just how fast things can change. You understand, we've got to be dependent on God. We've got to stand up for Jesus and say, God, you are my sufficiency. You are my source. And without you, I ain't going to be able to make it. I need you. I need you. Amen. Invest your life in service to the King and watch Him bless you immensely. Obed-Edom shows us that our proximity to God is directly proportionate to our productivity for God. Our proximity to God is directly proportional to our pro productivity for God. Now listen, Psalm 8410, David said, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. You know, Moses had that same thing. I'd rather suffer with the children of God than enjoy the pleasures of Pharaoh for a season. You know, it's just something about being close to him. He said, you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. So my proximity to God is up to me. If I want to be close to him, I decide that. I make my mind up for that. I want his presence. Over the next couple of weeks, we may stay in this place of suspension. If so, I want you to understand, you need to invite the presence of God into your life. You need to make sure the presence dwells. It's not hard. Read a scripture or two out of your Bible. Kick on a worship song and just give God a little word. It don't take two or three minutes. And it may turn into five, ten minutes. Fifteen to thirty minutes. You might find yourself throughout the day thinking about His presence and the goodness of God. I have so many things to be thankful for. The other day I was sitting in my man cave. My phone goes off. I see the face on my phone, my grandson. You know, my grandson doesn't call me just to talk. He wants to see my face. That's the thing to him. He won't, he won't see Papa. So he calls, he, he got me on the phone, and he'll just laugh. And we make fun of one another and talk to one another. What you doing? Mowing the grass. He'll go outside, set his phone down, and crank the lawnmower to show me he can crank the lawnmower. <laughs> Look at that, Papa. I can crank it. I'm eight years old. I'm mowing the grass. Out. You go, dog. Amen. Yeah. But there's something about having the presence of somebody you love in the midst of you. You know how much God loves you and wants to be in the midst of you? All the things he's done and blessed us with, better is one day. What can God's presence do for you? It can erase your past, give you a future and reveal it. Your enemies are exposed. Your lack has to get back. Your pain can't remain. Your fear must disappear. Your sins are washed away. Your weakness turns to strength. Your priorities find order. Your poverty becomes abundance. Your expression and depression turns to joy. Amen. Your flawed thinking is corrected. Your identity as a child of God is revealed. Your destiny is discovered. Your legacy will remain. I tell you the truth now. The presence of God will mess you up. You're blessed by default literally means to fall to fail to meet an obligation keep his presence in your house hallelujah if others had failed I want that blessing God has a way to bless you in so many ways so many ways let me pray for you blessed we're hitting the default button right now but others have failed. They failed to get the presence of God to the house. David had to hit the default button and say, how are we going to get this thing back? Let's go back to the original intention of God. The original intention of God was to walk with them in the garden. 
with Adam and Eve and to dwell and have habitation, not just visitation. So we hit a default button and we go back to habitation and we say, God, we want to habitate with you. It's not some spiritual thing so much so as it is just a conscious understanding that God is with me right now. So God, I thank you that you're with me. I thank you that you've rescued me. Listen, if you've given your life right now to Jesus, would you send us, a somehow get us a message through holywildministries.com. Somehow get hold of us. But let us know what God is doing in your life. And let me just pray with you. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins for my wayward thinking, for trying to put your presence in anything other than carrying it on my shoulders and lifting you up. It's never changed. I can't put it in a new card. I can't add it to some kind of different music. God, the presence of God has got to be lifted up by you. And you said, if I be lifted up, I draw all people. So we lift you up. Write our names in the Lamb's book of life. Forgive us of our failures, shortcomings. Help us to be forgivers of others. To love and be merciful. To be kind in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I know this much. I started out a little slow, but I ended strong. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. When I, I, I literally preached myself into his presence. I feel his presence even right here. I sense him wanting to heal you right now in your home. First, he's healing you of fear, taking fear away from you. It's leaving your home right now in Jesus' name. A confidence is coming over you. A quiet confidence. Not one of them arrogant confidences like many of us put on at times or running out. A quiet confidence that everything's going to be all right. Touching the body right now. Taking aches and pains away from you. A couple of weeks ago, I had such a severe back problem, I couldn't hardly walk. My staff noticed it. My family noticed it. I had to grab a cane. Couldn't tie my own shoes. Two weeks ago on a Sunday, I stepped up on a platform. And it was like God went, boom, got you, son. Reminded me of how much I love him and need him. My back hadn't hurt since. It just like completely just healed me. And I knew I was walking in a miracle. This morning, I would like for you to understand. And until we know more, these are announcements. Until we know more. As soon as we know it, we're going to let you know. Because we want you to be involved in this house. We want you to bring the presence of God from your home over here to this house. When you leave here, you take the presence of God back. But the presence, you don't go nowhere without the presence of God. Amen. Keep Him with you. Knowing that that He's there. Watch this live stream. Please share. You know, you can share this with others. Let people know about this message. I believe it will be an encouragement. Amen. You can also note. That our drive-in service is out at the Little Country Church, 30 miles from here. If you're anywhere near New Caney, 1030. We start on time because we don't want to leave you sitting in that car too long. We're going to have a powerful service out in New Caney today at 1030. Amen. Just drive in as you are, of course. Also, uh, Facebook Live. We'll be on Facebook Live at 1030 on the Little Country Church on, on Facebook. You can also look up my Facebook page. I think somebody will be using it. And then ways for you to give. I want to thank you. You've been so faithful to give. You know, I've had churches and pastors call and say, man, our finances are down. I said, I, 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 I can't, can't complain, man. God has blessed our people. And there are people of blessing. They honor God with their tithe and offering. They always have. I believe they always will. Amen. So you can mail it to us, drop it off at our new Caney location. You can give online at holywildministries.com or you can give through our Holy Wild app. Either way, we're starting to see an increase in our online giving. Matter of fact, I've never seen that much online giving. It's over and above what we were before. So we're seeing folk are learning. I don't know how to do it yet. I'm old school. I wrote a check out for my tithe on Friday. Amen. I'll put a check in. But eventually, we'll all be learning how to do this this new way of doing things. So as you're giving today, I want to proclaim this over you. Amen. As you give, we're believing in God for jobs and better jobs. Now, I know you feel like you lost your job. I believe you're going to get a better job. How about that? How about you agreeing with me in the name of Jesus? That there be more money and less hours in your life. Benefits, sales and commissions, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Finding money, 
Bills being paid off. Boy, to be debt free is a powerful freedom. Settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, and I say success to you and success to the kingdom of God. Every day I get a little bit closer, closer to you. Lord, you have my heart.